went with the two slight favorites. Tatiana Suarez, Valentin Shevchenko. Fuck, I got a really good feeling about these two. Welcome to Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show. I am Kyle Anthony and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the prediction show for UFC 238, Marlon Marais versus Henry Cejudo. We're going to talk about our two plays that we currently have for purchase on Wager Talk. Very excited to talk about both of those on the Bet Review Show on Sunday. Definitely take a look at those. And also, we're going to talk about two free plays as well. So we're going to get into all of that. But before we do, do not forget to subscribe, like, head kick the bell icon, get involved in the channel. I always appreciate everybody who hits that thumbs up button and also comments down below. Always appreciate it. And after every video, I do continue the conversation down below. So the first thing we are going to talk about here, and we're going to run through these a little bit quicker today, a little bit of a time constraint. But we're going to get through this today. Um, first, we're going to talk about is one of our free plays is between Aljamain Sterling versus Pedro Munoz. This one is a fun fight. Uh, it's on the uh, the prelims. It's a fight that I think is a little bit under the radar. There's so many great fights on this card, especially in the in, on the main card. This one here, I liked what I saw. Definitely excited to talk about this one. So let's get into it. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about Pedro Munoz. Now, I think this is an interesting line here. You've got Pedro Munoz, slight, uh, slight underdog, plus 106. You've got uh, Aljamain Sterling, who is minus 128. Now, Pedro Munoz, everyone right now has that in their mind of him knocking out Cody Garbrandt in his last fight. Now, that was an interesting fight, and that's something right away that I definitely want to talk about just because of the recency bias kind of thing here. Now you've got Cody Garbrandt and now I, I can't, I'm a guy that was on the Cody Garbrandt train. I was there. I was with him through the, uh, you know, I, I was looking at him towards the, 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 the TJ Dillashaw. I bet him uh, the TJ Dillashaw fight didn't win there. And I didn't bet the, the, the Pedro Munoz versus Cody Garbrandt. Big part is because of his chin. And, and that's something I think right away that needs to be discussed in this fight. Now, reason being is Cody Garbrandt is a wild man in that fight. I mean, he, he he's, a, he's a killer when he comes to that killer instinct. He's got fantastic boxing, um, and he's been able to do a lot of great things up until that point where he fought TJ Dillashaw and got knocked out twice, and then he gets knocked out by Pedro Munoz. So, to me, do you take anything away from that? I don't think you take anything away from that, but it's definitely, I mean, those guys just stood in the middle and traded, and that's something that's not going to happen in this fight. You're not going to see that happen in this fight with, with Aljamain Sterling. But you've got Cody Garbrandt. He does knock him out in the first round in a, in a kind of a crazy fight, awesome fight. Uh, a one-round fight was pretty um, entertaining to watch. And prior to that, he ended up beating Brian Caraway. Now, I am not a bit, I'm not very big at all <coughs> on Brian Caraway. Not at all. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I, I mean, it was another fight where he won, you know, Pedro looked good, um, another knockout performance for him, you know, he looked good there, but to be honest, Brian Caraway to me is, is, is more on the journeyman side of things, a guy that I thought he looked horrible in that fight, I thought his body looked terrible in that fight, I was not very big at all on what I really saw from him there, but Pedro did what he needed to do, he went into there, he got the knockout, got the early finish, and really elevated himself to get that Cody Garbrandt fight, which was a fight it was... Funny enough, it's a fight that, you know, Cody was, I don't think, was really looking at Pedro as, I feel it was a very set-up kind of fight for him to possibly win that fight. I, I really look at it as, this is a great stylistically matchup for Cody to kind of get back in. So once he beat uh, Brian Caraway, I thought that they looked at this as, hey, this is a great fight for Cody to possibly win. I may be wrong, but that's kind of the way I look at it. I always look at the storylines, who the UFC wants to kind of push forward or maybe work a little bit better of a stylistic matchup for them. But Cody didn't come through, obviously. So he beats him. And prior to that, he beat um, Brent Johns. Now, Brent Johns is another guy that I am not high on at all. I mean, he came in, he had, he was undefeated in the UFC. He's lost twice. 
doesn't look that good. I mean, you know, he's, you know, he, he's got a little bit of the, you know, the swag to him kind of thing where, you know, and maybe not swag is the best word, but, you know, he, you know, he came in undefeated. He was kind of talking the talk a little bit and he hasn't really done too much. It was a one-sided victory for Pedro Munoz. So Pedro Munoz does get that, um, does get that victory. He has both of these fighters I'm going to talk about. Both are coming off three straight wins. And prior to that, he lost to John Dotson. And Pedro Munoz is a kind of fighter where he's looking to grab a limb. You know, he has knocked out a couple guys, but he's the kind of guy that goes in there. He's looking to take, grab a limb, get a hold of you, get it to the ground if possible. But if he can grab a hold of you and get inside the clinch, that's that's home for him. He's very good inside there. And then you've got Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling on the other side, go running down his th three fights uh, real quick. Uh, most recently, he beat Jimmy Rivera. Now, I'm actually pretty high on Jimmy Rivera. Um, I know that, you know, he, he's fought a lot of tough guys. And I know that he's coming off, you know, a loss to, to Sterling. Two fights to go to that. He ended up losing um, against Marlon Marais, which obviously we know what's happening with Marais now. He's in the title fight. So, it was, that was that's a big win for him. I mean, he, it was a lopsided victory. Al Jermaine looked very good. And he's a kind of another fighter that I put in perspective that he continues to elevate. He just continues to move forward, elevate, and look good. Um, so he looked good in that fight. That was a big win for him. Prior to that, Cody Stamen. And Cody Stamen is another guy that, that I think was, you know, on the road. He's, he's, he's uh, well-rounded. He definitely uh, it continues to do well in the UFC. And that was a great submission victory for Al Jermaine. And this is just showing how well-rounded Al Jermaine really is. And prior to that, he beat Brett Johns too in a one-sided um, decision victory as well. And prior to that, he ended up getting knocked out by uh, Marlon Marais. So both of these guys have, um, you know, have, have, you know, three straight wins coming off of a loss and came back with three straight wins. But if you break down them, just writing that down really quickly, to break that down stylistically, really what I'm looking at is, You've got the wrestling of Al Jermaine. You've got the fact that, you know, he's long and rangy. And that is something I think is paramount in this fight. Now, uh, Pedro Munoz is a guy that, you know, some people talk about as, you know, you know he takes you to the ground or, you know, he does have the, you know, again, he, he, he can grab a limb and, and he can do a lot of damage with that. But he's got a 22% takedown um, success rate. Very low, very, very low. Al Jermaine being lanky, I think that, to me, he's going to be able to keep... Uh, Pedro Munoz on the outside. And I think that's going to be a... I mean, Pedro's durable. Pedro's the kind of guy that, you know, he's going to be very hard to put away. He's going to be very difficult to put away. And Al Jermaine isn't the kind of guy that's going to go out there and knock your lights out. He's the kind of guy that's going to work great footwork. He's going to move around the cage a lot. He's going to grapple. Um, he's going to get in tight on you, but then he's going to move around. He's got the credentials to be on the ground. So, you know, it's, it's Pedro does have that, but it's this is, gonna, this is probably going to be a stand-up matchup I like the fact that he's going to keep distance. And the fact that he's long and rangy, I think that that's something that's really going to work well for Al Jermaine in this fight. Now, Pedro, you know what? You know, he, you know, does he have power? You know, unexpectedly, he's kind of shown some power here, you know, against a, a, an iffy Brian Caraway and a chinny um, uh, Cody No Chin Garbrandt. I mean, you've got two guys here that he's knocked out that are not, you know, the upper echelon kind of guys. I think Al Jermaine goes into this fight works great footwork, works the range, works distance control. I love the camp that Al Jermaine comes from. I think they're going to have a great game plan for Pedro Munoz here. I think that Pedro goes in there, and I think that he's going to try to get in tight, and he's not going to have much success. Even if he gets in tight, Al Jermaine's good, good inside. He's got good grappling, and I think that at a price tag of minus 128 right now, I think is a good price tag here. I think the line's pretty much right. But I like Sterling here. I think Sterling goes out there. I think he outpoints him for three rounds. I think he's going to have a nice showing. I think it's going to be a 2-1. You know, I don't think it's going to be a lopsided. But I think Aljamain, it's going to be very hard for Pedro to get in tight. Do what he's done over these last few fights. Do what he's done over the last three fights. I don't think he does any of that to Aljamain. Aljamain continues to look good. I like the way he's elevating. There's a lot of great things to like about him compared to Pedro. Pedro has looked good. Not saying he's some bum by any chance, but I think Sterling puts together three solid rounds, gets himself the decision victory. So as a free play, I am going Al Jermaine Sterling to defeat Pedro Munoz. Now, the other one I wanted to talk about, and I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about this one, to be honest. And people want me, they always want me to talk about the main event, the main event. Um, so we're going to talk about the main event. We're going to talk about Henry Cejudo versus Marlon Marais. Now, 
this is a very interesting fight. Now, first of all, the fact that Henry Cejudo, uh, there was a possible rumors, whatever you want to call it, of a, he hit his knee. And there, you know, that just, you know, swirled through the headlines that he hurt his knee. And then yesterday they showed him he's, you know, running around, he was jumping, he was, he was doing um, uh, uh, jumping jacks, you know, running in place to prove I'm fine. So that's a good sign because first of all, you know, whether, you know, whether I'm betting it or I'm not betting it, I don't want to see the main event go away. Most of the time, that's going to be the most exciting fight on the card. Um, but he looks fine. So I'm, I'm taking that out of my handicapping of this fight. I, I really think that he's fine. I think that, you know, the rumors and whatever. Now, could I be wrong? Maybe that's, maybe that's why you may want to fade this fight. But if you like Marais, maybe you like it even more now. You know, who knows which like. But the way I'm breaking it down is I'm putting that as a, that's, that's irrelevant to what's happening on Saturday night in Chicago. So looking at these two, I think the first thing that you've got to talk about is what Henry Cejudo has done over the last few fights. Now, I think, to me, a huge factor of Cejudo's success has come from that loss to Demetrius Johnson. That first loss that he had coming into the UFC, you know, and, 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 and had a quick rise and going against possibly, arguably, one of the greatest fighters of all time. We don't have to get into that debate, but a lot, you know, uh, you know pound for pound, one of the greats. Um, and he goes in there the first time and he loses. And I think that loss really sunk so deep that it refocused him, it re-energized him, and it realized, you know what, I am a gold medalist wrestler and, you know, poss you know, easily the best wrestler in the division, possibly one of the best wrestlers up there with, you know, you know, um, you know, Daniel Cormier, you know, he's up there. He's up there with those guys. You have to put him up there with those guys. And, you know, he didn't do what he thought he would do. And I think that refocusing is very, very interesting to see what happens. And you see, take a look. Uh, he went out there and, you know, he beat three really tough guys. You know, going out there, uh, Sergio Pettis. I'm high on Sergio Pettis. I know that he's had some ups and some downs there. But Sergio Pettis is tough. And he beat Sergio Pettis in decision. And then he goes out there and has a decision victory against Demetrius Johnson in their second time. And I think that fight, don't have to dive into it. I'm sure everybody has saw it. I don't have to go play by play, round for round. But that was a really, really great fight for him. Now, DJ is tough to take down. He's great everywhere. He's fast. He's got insanely creative strikes. You know, the way he moves, his cardio's off the charts. I mean, all these things are great. And Henry Sudo had a great game plan. The way he was able to get on top of him, wrestle him, work him. Such a great strategy. And he goes up there and he beats one of the greats of all time. And then after that, he goes up against TJ Dillashaw in a fight where, you know what, a lot of people are looking at TJ here and saying, and I did take Henry Cejudo in that fight, a lot of people are looking at TJ and saying he's going to wipe him clean, this is going to be kind of crazy that, you know, he's going down in weight, but, you know, Henry Cejudo, is he that good? And the fact that he goes out there and knocks out TJ in the first round in impressive fashion, dropped him a couple times, was really impressive for a guy that is a wrestler. I mean, Henry Cejudo is a wrestler, and he's striking, and the way that he has really adopted that karate stance, that wide karate stance, he would be able to go over and kind of move, and, and, and it almost gives him more of a flowing movement compared to the way he used to fight, where a little, little more tight, a little more, you know, not as fluent, not as just comfortable, and I think that style has really worked well how he's doing his striking, how he kind of leaves that hand out and kind of paws at his opponent to try to get in his face a little bit to kind of offset his rhythm. I think that's very interesting to see what he's adopted. But I will get into a little bit more of the styles in a minute. The, um, and then you got Marlon Marais on the other side. Now, Marlon Marais is an elite kickboxer. You know, he's got KO power going out there. He knocked out um, uh, Sterling. He goes out there and he, you know, um, knocked out Jimmy Rivera. I mean, he has looked really spectacular beating a Sun Sal. I mean, he has looked great. Now, the thing that when I'm going there and I'm breaking this down, now obviously he's got um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu credentials. There's no doubt he has that. But when you take a look at who he's fought, now I know that the camp he comes from, he's got Frankie Edgar there, and that's a big thing too, but he has never come close to facing anybody of the wrestling of Cejudo. Now, that is, 
you know, obviously Cejudo, you know, you could arguably say he's never faced anybody of the caliber of Marais. But you have to say, well, he's faced TJ. Now, TJ, um, TJ and DJ, um, he's, he's faced both of them and beat both of them. They're not the size, they're not the strength of Marais. Of course, that's definitely something, too. But you've also got to put in the fact that Marais has never been in a, in a position this big in his career. Now, I know that, again, it's the same thing. You're going to say, hey, he's been in title fights in the World Series of Fighting. And, you know, I mean, he's had some main events, but they were, you know, you know, random places. They weren't really these big, there was no pay-per-view. And you've got Cejudo, who has been through a couple of those. He's been through basically a super fight recently. Uh, prior to that, he fought the greatest of all time, beat him also, too. That's a lot of great things to say about Henry Cejudo. The big X factor is going to be what Henry Cejudo now Moving into this upper weight class, what does that do to him? Now, they've shown pictures of him. He looks like a monster. He looks, for, for a guy who's so small and compact, he looks pretty jacked. Now, that is a great thing, but it also does that hurt his cardio. And that's going to be really the, the situation there is, does the, the adding that muscle help him, hurt him? What does that do? For me, the way I'm breaking this down, I really think that Tejudo, that first explosive move that he has now, I think is such a difference maker for what Marais has seen. Now, it, again, Marais is tough. Marais has been able to, I mean, he has the most insane reaction time that I have seen with a kick. I mean, he is able to just fire that thing off in a split second without even thinking. And that's a scary thing. That is absolutely a scary thing. But I think Cejudo can go out there, get it in tight. And I think that's going to be the difference maker. I think he's going to be smart. I think that he's going to be smart early. Cejudo will be. But I, you know, he's going to know that he can't stand and trade with Marais for five rounds. He can't do it. It, it just can't happen. He does not have the, the power. He does not have overall just the weapon and the arsenal that Marais has. But I like Cejudo here. I think Cejudo gets in tight for the majority of this fight. And as I was saying with Dan Tom and any of the any of you that want to check that out, it is up on his channel um, and up on his Twitter account as well. But um, when we were talking about it yesterday on his show, you know what, it, the big question is going to be if Cejudo goes in that first round or that second round, either of those first two rounds basically, and is able to dictate the pace and get on top of them and get close, bring him to the ground and bring Marais to the ground, that's the game changer. That will completely change Marais' attitude, what's happening, how he feels, is he going to drain him a little bit? And that's the question is, if, you know, if he gets in tight early, that is a game changer. And I think that's what's going to happen, that if Marais is not able to really withstand the takedown, that Cejudo is going to be able to get him to the ground and he's going to be able to do what he wants to do with him there and force the takedown early. And if he's able to do that, I don't really see many other paths to victory. Now, Marais... I don't think he wins a five-round fight. I think if you like Marais in this situation, you're going for the knockout. You're, you're, you're betting the finish. I don't think he goes out there and he pieces him up for five rounds. That's my opinion there, but I don't really think that happens. I think Cejudo has the opportunity to really slow the pace down, get on top of him, take him to the ground, work the round, and Cejudo's not looking for it. Now, it's, of course he did... He went up there, he knocked out TJ Dillashaw, but for the most part, you know, I mean, he knocked out Wilson Reese, you know, as well, but this is a, this, this has got more of a decision victory for Cejudo written on it, if you like Cejudo. So for me here, I like Henry Cejudo. I think he goes out there. I think he gets the job done. I think that it's going to be a five-round fight. It's going to be a tough one, but it'll be very interesting to see in those early rounds if he's able to get a hold of him and take him to the ground, because if he doesn't, then you've got Marais, who's going to be able, if, if he's able to withstand those takedowns, that's the game changer for Marais, who's going to be able to stand up and outbang him standing up top. So for me, at, um, and I didn't even give the odds earlier, Cejudo is a, a slight, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pick em basically. You got uh, plus 100 for Cejudo currently. You got Marais at minus 120. So I like Cejudo here. I'm taking Cejudo. That's my pick. Those are my two free plays for UFC 238. Now, the last thing that I wanted to throw in here is a play that I'm not betting much. I am not betting much at all on this, on this one, but I I like it as, as a big underdog play here, so figured, why not talk about it? So those are the two main plays, and also that's that's the issue with doing this show also, is the two that I really want to talk about 
are my two plays that I have on Wager Talk. So I talk about those on Sunday after on our bet review show. So definitely take a look and uh, you'll see win or lose. You will find out who I had and the breakdown and my thoughts on that fight. But another one that I'm sprinkling in is between Jimmy Rivera and Peter Yan. Now, Peter Yan is 12-1. Is and one. He's minus 350. He's a big favorite. You've got Jimmy Rivera, who's 22-3. and three. He's plus 280 currently. And not to dive into this one, because I'm not going to dive into this one, but you take a look at the, who these two have fought. Now, the last fight that, that Jimmy Rivera had was against Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling beat him 30-27, to 27, sweeped him basically. Uh, Jimmy Rivera did not look good. And again, it's, it's kind of the recency bias to me here. I think, I think people really are downgrading him. Plus, he ended up getting knocked out against Marlon Marais, who Marlon Marais, again, is, we know who he is now. He's a, he is, uh, you know, a guy that's, that, sh that shot to the top as soon as he got into the UFC. But you take a look at Peter Yan. He's got a lot of ability. He is very aggressive, a lot of pressure. You know, he, he definitely has some creative striking. But the guys that he's faced, I'm just, that just pulls me away from this. I feel like this line is definitely off. I would give Peter Yan the, the, um, the I would give him as a favorite. But I would do it as a more, you know, minus 150, plus 125 kind of line. I feel the line is way out of whack. I think there's too much value on Jimmy Rivera. Yes, Peter Yan should absolutely win this fight. He should win this fight. But the fact that these lines are so crazy to me, I think that this is a very close fight. This is not where the, this line is not where this fight, I think, will be. I don't see this as a lopsided victory. Um, of course, you can go out there and knock him out. Of course. But... The line is, is wide. Peter Yan should win this fight. But I'm going to be taking Jimmy Rivera here as my underdog play. You take a look at who he's fought, Peter Yan. Just giving the actual, um, their actual uh, UFC records. His first fight in the UFC, he fought a guy who was 10-6 and six overall and 1-3 and three in the UFC. And the guy doesn't fight in the UFC anymore. Another guy, he fought um, Jin Soon uh, Sun. Jin Soon Sun. 9-3, he's 0-1 in the UFC, hasn't fought in the UFC. Then he fought uh, Douglas Silva de, um, de Andrade. I'm totally screwing that name up. Um, he's 2-2 two two in the UFC. And then he fought Dodson. And John Dodson is 2-4 and four out of his last six. So it's not that he's fought these high-level guys. This is the, the, the toughest fight he has faced. Although Peter Ant has incredible ability, had, can definitely go for, far in the UFC. Definitely. But at this position here, very early, more of an unproven kind of guy. I like Jimmy Rivera again. Like I said, I think he's well-rounded. It'll be interesting to see what he does. As just an underdog play, a little sprinkle for me here. I'm going Jimmy Rivera. I'm going out on a limb here. So those are my plays. I will have Henry Cejudo as a free play, Aljamain Sterling as a free play. Those are my two main free plays. And again, a little sprinkle on Jimmy Rivera. Those are the plays. Definitely stick around for the Bet Review Show on Sunday. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Always appreciate the comments. And this is Kyle Anthony's UFC Betting Show, and I'll see you Sunday on the Bet Review.